So the, the invasive species I chose was the nutria and its scientific name is Myocaster coypus. All right, so nutrias are large semi-aquatic rodents. They were imported to the west coast of the United States for their fur during the fur trade, but were then released because these fur farms ended up going out of business. Um, they were then brought to the Gulf Coast area in an attempt to control weeds, which was a really bad idea. Um, this led to wetlands being destroyed due to the nutrients consumption of native plants that held the soil in place. Um, so nutrients are about two feet long with a large head, dark brown fur, and yellow or orange teeth. They also have partially webbed hind feet, which aid them in swimming. High up ears, eyes, and nostrils, a heavy rat-like tail, and three to five inch whiskers on either side of their nose. Nutrias often get wrongly identified as beavers or muskrats, and although they do look pretty similar, they have a lot of distinguishing characteristics that make them unique. So nutrias are smaller than beavers, but larger than muskrats. Um, an adult nutria can weigh about 20 pounds, whereas beavers can weigh up to 75 pounds and muskrats only weigh around like four pounds. Um, nutrias don't create their own shelter from the elements like beavers do. Um, oftentimes they'll burrow in holes or they'll take over holes already made by muskrats. Um, nutrias also have a thicker, long rat leg tail, whereas beavers have paddle shaped tails and muskrats have thinner pointy tails. So the nutria has a really broad diet. They're herbivores and will pretty much eat any plant material they can find. They may eat some bugs that happen to be on the plants, but insects aren't really a necessary part of their diet. Um, they're described as opportunistic feeders, and they eat about 25% of their body weight daily. They feed mainly in the nighttime, and they prefer eating many small meals instead of one large meal, so they essentially eat all the time with some breaks in between. Um, nutrients reproduce extremely quickly. There isn't really a specific mating season. Um, they re reproduce all year long, but reproduction does peak during the late winter, early summer, and mid-autumn. They have a gestation period of about 130 to 132 days, and the litter size can range from about 1 to 13 nutrients being born at a time. So nutrients are native to temperate South America, which lies just below the equator. This region is represented by the red area on this map, um, and all the pink areas are where they've become invasive, which as you can see is in the west and the Gulf Coast of the United States, Mexico, um, parts of Europe and Asia and Africa. Um, so if we look specifically at the United States, their population is most dense around the Gulf Coast and they pose a lot of problems specifically in Texas and Louisiana, but also in the Chesapeake Bay, which is in Maryland. Um, there's been many reports of them being seen in up to 40 states, but they're really only reported to be established in coastal areas. So why were they brought here in the first place? They were first introduced in California in 1889 to be used in the fur market industry, but the fur market ended up declining and nutrients escaped or were released. Um, and after that, they were relocated to Louisiana for weed control, which, as I said, um, caused more harm than good. So nutrients were able to become successful for many reasons. They reproduce extremely quickly, and there is very little population control or natural predators. They can adapt to a wide variety of habitats, and they've even been found under buildings in large cities. Um, and their broad diet also helps them to become established. Um, the main area being damaged by nutrients are coastal wetlands. They eat so much vegetation in these areas that erosion occurs. They can also breach levees by burrowing, destroy crops, and they also carry diseases, specifically a nematode that causes nutria itch, which is like a severe rash in people that handle nutrients. Um, and the image I included shows how bad the damage can be, um, and the erosion being caused essentially turns like marshes into open water. Um, so it's really important to 
uh, that we address these issues that nutrients are causing because as global warming increases, um, obviously the wetlands are getting more and more vulnerable and nutrients are just posing more of a threat on these areas. Um, so we can control nutrient populations through the use of lethal traps, fencing to protect vegetation, and we can also consume them. Um, and then I have a video about trapping. And that's my sources.